Brilliant. Good morning, everybody. It's Neil Jenkinson here. As you can see, I'm the regional manager for Bieber in the North, uh, Scotland and Northern Ireland. Um, we're doing a slightly different webinar today. Uh, we're introducing one of our associate members to you. Um, our associate members are on board to try and assist uh, you to run your business slightly differently and maybe add value for you. Um, and our associate today, as you can see from the screen, is Vivup. And Chris Last, their Commercial and Strategy Director, uh, is with us today to present to you. Um, all I'm going to ask again, guys, is normal uh, housekeeping rules. If you do have a question for Chris, please pop <coughs> it to me, uh, either to all panellists or to me privately. I'll hold on to it till the very end. Uh, we won't interrupt Chris while he's doing his presentation. And then we'll just have a brief Q&A at the end of the session. So, yeah, without further ado, Mr Last, my good friend, thank you for putting this on for us today. And over to you, mate, and I'll chat with you later. Brilliant. Thanks, Neil. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, well, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. Um, firstly, I'm from Swansea. So not only will you have trouble understanding my dulcet Welsh tones, uh, I also have a cold to compound things a bit further. So if I'm coughing, spluttering or sneezing, please bear with me and uh, send some love my way because I'm feeling a little bit ropey today. Um, I've been in the industry and connected to Bieber Brokers for over 10 years, uh, yeah, over 10 years now, um, working directly with insurers and brokers to support their employee value proposition. And on the other side as well, supporting brokers to differentiate their schemes with added value benefits, something different such as discounts, rewards and member benefits. Um, so I'm hoping today we'll bring some useful knowledge to the table um, and hope, hopefully sort of help to retain your valued colleagues in what is becoming a difficult period in the employee value proposition uh, space. Um, there's a couple of learning points I wanted to cover off today. Um, so without further ado, we, we'll, we'll kind of explore why employee retention is business critical as a metric. Why culture is intrinsically linked to retention of staff or colleagues. Uh, best practice and solutions that will engage employees and lead to high performance. And why proactive employee well-being should be at the heart of retention and why so many businesses are getting on board. Things are changing. Um, so hopefully some of the information here will resonate with you guys. Uh, attracting and retaining employees. So some stats for you. 96% um, of employees are set to look for a new job this year. Wow, that's a huge stat. And uh, for those that those of you involved with people management and running businesses, it costs an average of £12,000 to uh, replace an employee. And that could be recruitment fees, it could be training fees, uh, and other attraction metrics to bring people to businesses. And 75% of employees say their benefits keep them on board with an employer. So that's quite an interesting stat as well. Now, those three put together are huge, and it's still very much an employee's market. COVID set a bit of a precedence uh, for demanding more from employers, and I think that precedent has continued in the last three or four years. So my question to you is, is a simple one. Would it be better to deliver a more meaningful benefits package in addition to the salaries we pay, or do we pay 12K every time we need to replace a disengaged employee? So have a think about that for a minute. And then at the end, I'm sure you'll, um, you'll have some questions and some statements and some contributions you'd like to make, and we can discuss that um, at the appropriate time. Um, key workplace challenges for employers. So I'm sure all of you are seeing some of these uh, effects in your business. Some of you might be seeing all of them, but absenteeism, building a strong work culture, supporting cost of living pressure, providing effective mental health support, retention and recruitment, employee engagement, and engaging employees in sustainability. So are you seeing any of these issues? Cost of living stands out for me because it doesn't matter whether you earn 25 grand a year or you earn 100 grand a year. Whatever you're buying, you're paying more for it. So your money's not your money's not going as far as it used to as an employee. We're also recruiting Gen Z employees now, and that's a different ball game. So back when you know many of us uh, entered work for the first time, 
uh, going back all of those years ago. Um, our friendship networks now are often built up from employees um, and, and friends that we built when we first started work. So going to the pub on a Thursday night, going bowling, you know, going out for meals, going for quizzes after work in town, those types of things. When you work hybridly or remotely, it's much harder to engage an audience uh, and, and, a, and, a, and a business and a workforce um, with those kind of, you know, di diff diff different sort of engagement routes available to employees. And particularly when they're younger, um, starting work for the first time, these opportunities to build relationships and friendships are no longer there. And that sometimes has a negative effect on, um, on engagement in the business. So mental health uh, support is fundamental, particularly for those Gen Z employees and others. Um, and it's not just about an EAP anymore. So, so for many years, and I've worked in this industry for many years, an EAP was very much a box ticking exercise. You know, what are you doing to support your employees' mental health? Well, we've got an EAP, tick the box, fantastic. We've done our job, um, but it's about wider mechanisms that are pre preventative before the point of crisis that we see now. Um, engagement is another one I'd like to draw on. Um, it's huge. Look how differently we operate compared to January 2020 and pre-COVID. So hybrid working, home working. We all live on teams. I don't know what your diaries are like for most of the week, but mine, mine pretty much evolves around teams or traveling to London. So how effective is your engagement strategy as um, people champions in your business or business owners? Have a think about that for a minute. From a Viva perspective and, and, and my perspective, we see well-being broken down into four pillars, uh, emotional, physical, financial, and community. Well-being is the fastest growing area of employee benefits in the UK. So it, it's really important that you consider the strategy you have and making sure you get it correct the first time around because it will have a positive effect on your business from recruitment right through to retention and engagement. There's a stat there from CIPD as well, which is worth thinking about. I wanted to draw up financial well-being and why it's important. Um, many of which on this slide is uh, sort of directly linked to cost of living and the crisis everybody's facing into. So three and four employees agree that their mental health would improve if their employer gave them financial well-being support and benefits. Now, that could mean a number of things, but there's a number of benefits available that you could offer to your colleagues that would support that uh, reduction. 11.8 million employees say their financial situation affects their ability to be pro pro productive at work. So again, as people champions and business owners, um, we look at productivity and, and we look at how we can find marginal gains to support there. That's a really interesting stat. So... Ask yourself, you know, if, you, if you've got benefits, how successful they are. Look at the data, um, find out who's using them, find out what benefit they're getting from them, and, and then sort of draw your own conclusions. But really, meaningful value here is about reducing monthly bills and costs, discounts on food shopping and purchases um, to, to stretch net pay, salary sacrifice. Um, some of you may already offer it, some of you don't, but offering salary, salary sacrifice schemes can be a real benefit for employees that help to, help to stretch their salary further and organizations can save some money from it as well. Um, making new items more affordable and financial advice to support all of your employees. So collectively across these, uh, these five decals, there's quite a few things there that could really support employees from a financial well-being perspective. Uh, well-being. So why pro uh, why proactivity beats reactivity? Um, mental health seems to be the buzz phrase now, I suppose, doesn't it? And, and it affects everybody publicly. Um, in reality, it's always affected everybody. I think we are now uh, getting better at showing it, how it affects us, and also talking about it more, which I think is a really positive thing. Um, we have a long way to go, but the days of keeping things to yourself are slowly diminishing. So... As business owners and leaders, people leaders, um, being able to encourage employees with supportive solutions helps them and then helps the business. So 18.6 million working days lost last year to sickness. 
and many of those days are linked to minor illness and stress. So have a think about that for a minute. How does that affect your business? How many days last year did you lose uh, to, to minor illness and stress? And how some strategies could be easily implemented in your business or improved uh, to reduce that number? Recognition. I think this is a really important one. A reward is such an interesting word. So, I mean, to many people, reward generally means money. But how valid do you feel in work? Um, that's an interesting question. How valid do you think your colleagues feel? You work hybrid, you work remotely. Not everyone sees your contribution. The little things that make a business tick, they used to be really important. And those little things now have become BAU and they don't get noticed anymore. So you don't get the thank yous that you used to get for the very small contributions that really drive the business forward. Building a positive recognition strategy delivers marginal gains from your colleagues. And when people say thank you, it makes you want to deliver. It certainly does for me anyway. Um, yesterday, I was, at the, um, I was at Westminster. I was representing uh, Cycle to Work as an industry, as the chair of the Cycle to Work Alliance. Um, it was quite a quite an important meeting. It was my first delve into sort of politics, really. But at the end of the day, my CEO was actually on that call, and um, I got a, a high five on our, our recognition platform for it. And everybody in the business saw it. It really made me feel warm. It made me feel sort of um, sort of nice, and and I, I thought it was a really nice thing to to do. And everybody in the business saw it, so that drove me on. It made me want to do more. So think about that. Uh, and I think you'll instantly see a shift in productivity through the business. Who doesn't appreciate a thank you or a well done? It doesn't have to be a voucher. It doesn't have to be a bonus. It doesn't have to be, you know, financially orientated. It could literally just be a well done that all of the business sees. Uh, and that helps to, to, to drive productivity, positivity uh, and marginal gains across the business. I've put together a couple of tips for retention. Um, many of these things get forgotten about, I think, um, but they're as old as time um, and very transferable regardless of the industry. Not all of, the, not all of them cost the business lots of money either. Um, you know, a simple thank you goes a long way, but you know, I want you to think about these, these things as people champions in your business and, and also business owners. Uh, implement a strong onboarding strategy. So when you're bringing new people into your business, think about, how you onboard them, are they getting the very best onboarding experience and how can you make it better? Build an open and positive workplace culture. You know, really remember that lots of employees work remotely, hy hybridly, hybridly, I'm not sure that's a word, uh, from a hybrid, uh, you know, situation now. Things have changed. So, so being open and positive and inclusive is really important. Uh, encourage team building. Show appreciation. We talked about that a minute ago with, with reward and recognition. Providing a variety of benefits. Not every employee is going to take up every benefit, but you know, employees will take up different benefits that are relevant to them. But really think about how you communicate that to the to, to your workforce and how you engage people because things like salary sacrifice, many people wouldn't even know what it means, how it works, what the benefit is. And I think really simplifying how that benefit gets communicated could be a, a really interesting way of driving usage. Um, offer cost of living support. So I'm sure many people have, have provided pay rises in the last 18 months to support, but what else can you do? Can you, you know, can you give discounts off shopping, you know, 5% of Tesco, Sainsbury's, Asda's, the things that stretch net pay, really simple ways of supporting the cost of living crisis and making people's money go further. Invest in training and development. Again, you know, a real sort of retention uh, piece is, is training and development. The more you can train staff up and colleagues up, uh, the more likely they are to stay with you because it encourages development. Uh, encourage employees to voice their opinions. Um, that's a really important one because you want people to, to contribute and have a say uh, and collectively drive the business forward. Uh, and everybody's got an opinion. Not everybody's right um, at, at, at all times, but it's important that people have a, a route that they can express their opinions and their, you know concerns or, or, or positive outputs. Show a clear direction for progression. 
uh, and that's linked to career progression, you know, and also business progression, you know, make sure you're communicating the three year, the five year, the 10 year plan for the business so that people are on board with it and buy into it and they know that they're part of that journey and also reward hard work. A simple thank you does go a long way. So the benefits to your organization, uh, help to build an engaged productive workforce, reduce employee absenteeism, um, preventative and in the moment mental health support is really important. Get to those uh, crisis points, you know, early, make sure that you've got support mechanisms in place that prevent it going all the way. Um, and that will really help to drive the business. Help staff with cost of living while generating organizational savings. So that's really about salary sacrifice, I suppose, there, and how you can offer employees products and services that also generate savings for the organization. That then crystallizes a budget that you can then reuse in your reward budget to actually give employees more. Recruit the best talent and improve employee retention and add value to your service and provides extra stickiness. So I've, I've almost come to the end of my presentation, really. So, so I'm sure Jenki would be pleased that it's much quicker than the, uh, the half an hour he, he, he did give me. Um, today, we've talked about the cost of living uh, and also a disengaged workforce, the 12K per head to recruit um, you know, and the reduction in productivity, linking the values and culture of the business to your recognition strategy, the levers that drive the business forward easily through the power of a thank you, best practice and solutions to help, and the data to go with it. Remember, data is really important. So, you know, you can't, you can't manage something if you can't measure it. So when you're looking at benefits and reward and recognition, really drive down into the data to see how it's, uh, how it's affecting the business in a positive or a negative way. And that gives you an idea of how to change things. Um, and then when you bring all of these things together, the business benefits markedly. It doesn't need to cost the earth either. Um, there's lots of solutions out there which are very affordable. Um, and often it, it can be just a rejig of a strategy and, and you know, ensuring everybody from the leadership team buys into uh, what you're doing from a, a, you know, a recruitment, a retention and an engagement perspective. Um, and then finally, we've, we've covered off why well-being is now crucial. It's, it's more crucial than ever. It's become an employer's responsibility to support their employees with well-being. So you really need to start buying into it if you're not already. And, you know, looking at solutions that are preventative, uh, not at point of crisis. So have a think about that as well. Um, yeah, thank, thanks, Neil. I was just going to say one, one more thing. Um, you're probably wondering how or, or why I'm qualified to share the stats I have today and the content you've seen. Um, I've worked in employee benefits and well-being for over 16 years. I'm, I'm chair of the Cycle to Work Alliance, and I help to run a business that supports two and a half million employees across the UK. So we really go deep into it. 80% um, of the NHS use the solutions we've put together. Um, and if it can help NHS colleagues, um, they can help colleagues who work in insurance, engineering, teaching, you know, anything really. It's all very transferable because everybody has the same problems. Um, and then below, you can just see a screenshot of some of the businesses we work with. Um, so there's some great brands on there. And then some of the solutions we provide as well. But um, Neil will share the deck with you, I'm sure. Um, so well, Chris, more. yeah, that was going to be my, uh, my first uh, point, really, is obviously anybody that joined us late, uh, the recording will be online in a little while. Chris, if you just whiz over uh, the presentation to Ruth. Um, yeah. And then obviously anybody wants to get in touch, they can do. Obviously, we've seen your contact details there, mate. So excuse me a second. Brilliant. Yeah. Excuse me a second. I'm sure there's some questions and some statements and some uh, conversation to be had as well, Neil. Perfect. Thank you, Chris. Guys, are, are there any questions for Chris um, from the floor? Obviously, you know, if it's something you'd like to reach out to Chris and the Vivult team, uh, you obviously, by all means, you can do that privately. Uh, their contact information is on the Beaver website, but obviously, please make a note of Chris's details here. Chris, well, I mean, from, from a, obviously, you, you, you're dealing with not just insurance brokers, you're dealing with many, many businesses. Yeah, what is the number one sort of approach from a, if you like, a business owner for 
for their staff and what they're caring about? Is it is it the old you get five percent off at quick fit, or is it is it more the if you like the well being side of things now? I think it's a mix of both, to be honest with you, Neil. Um, you know, a lot of the older, more traditional benefits like shopping discounts. You know, I mean. I use, I use them myself, you know, 5% off at Sainsbury's. We spend £100 a week in Sainsbury's. That's a £240 a, a year saving. Mm -hmm. I'm stretching my net pay with. It's a really basic one. Uh, and I probably sound a little bit like Martin Lewis here. But, um, you know, that's a traditional benefit. And I think if you communicate a strategy like that really effectively, employees buy into it. And it's all about quantifying the savings they can make. Um, then, you know, salary sacrifice. You see in electric cars becoming much more... Uh, prevalent in, in, in businesses now and on the roads there's huge savings to be made there so you know we support organizations with uh, with EV schemes where employees can save up to you know up to a thousand pound even more per year employers can save the you know save similar amounts of money as well with the offsetting of NIM pensions mm -hmm. uh, and then well-being as well so you know as I said it affects everybody People are talking about it more. People are showing showing their cards and showing their hand a little bit more now. And I think the world we live in now, you know, it it's all about becoming preventative. How can we how can we you know prevent people from getting to a point of crisis? Um, we run our own EAP. Um, we've got our own sort of you know um, counselling function where 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 it's telephonic or we do face to face counselling uh, and it's clinically led. And you know. I, I, obviously, I can't go into to detail about the you know the call the calls and, and everything else that that, that I'm sure our councillors get. But what we want to do is 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 get to the point where employees are not having to call up about these issues. So how can we prevent that happening? And that, and that's you know financial well being, emotional support, that's physical um, physical well being as well. You know things like gym discounts, healthy eating, lots of things all add up to someone's well being. And I think that's really important to get across. And having really simple ways that employees can engage when they want to, um, you know, it, there's probably another webinar on AI as well that you could bring in here and how you can support with that. But uh, that's probably for another day. But um, but yeah, it's probably a mix of all of those things, I think, Neil. And then bringing it all together with a really effective communication strategy, yeah. you know, to ensure everyone is fully aware of what's on offer, how it can benefit them. Because you know you might not know about electric cars and the benefits you can make through Salsac, but you might know about the discount at Sainsbury's. Um, but in reality, you know, buying a, a Golf ID four through a salary sacrifice scheme could actually save you over a thousand pound a year, and that that's more beneficial to you. Yeah, than sure. Than a Sainsbury's discount, you know. Yeah, excellent, mate. We've been challenged a little bit, Martin. I love I love the question actually. Um, earlier in your presentation, you you produced a a ninety six percent stat. Uh, about the number of people intend to look for a job. Yes. Is that right? So we've just been challenged to say, do we know actually how many might have actually followed and left the business? Um, because Martin's in a very fortunate position. He had one out of his 10 people leave in 23. Wow. Um, I don't have that stat to hand, I'm afraid, but I'd be happy to follow up with Martin directly and uh, and, and discuss that in more detail I'm, I'm sure we have those stats it's stats, it's stats, it's stats aren't they chris you know obviously i think everybody's sort of you know the way that i suppose the way the world is and we're all under extreme pressure to keep the roof over our heads and pay the bills and everything else i think you know people will look for a um uh, an opportunity if if it's better for their own family and everything else moving forward i suppose but yeah, if you could look into that for me, that'd be that'd be really interesting, actually. Because Martin will follow that one up, and I like that. I like the fact that we do get challenged from the floor, um, just for a little bit more meat on the bone as such. So, Martin, sure. I appreciate you you reaching out with that question. Thank you. I think the the you know the other thing to highlight, you Neil, particularly with insurance brokers, is some of these benefits like the discount scheme. Um, is very transferable. So what we've done with some brokers is actually add this into schemes. Yeah. So it helps to cover the cost of an insurance policy. You know, I think, in, you know, if you read the media and Twitter insurance policies, you know, they're, they're, they're going up in price uh, and possibly rightly so. Um, and, and how do you address that? How can you make it more affordable and add more value as part of an insurance policy and things like a discount scheme you know, where you can save 200 quid a year at Sainsbury's helps to cover the cost of somebody's policy, whether that's drawn insurance or whether it's house insurance or whatever it is, you know, it's it's a transferable benefit that can still, you know, in different markets help to make people's money go further. 
Yeah, thanks, mate. Thank you. I don't know whether I should then say, and there are other uh, supermarkets available, because you, you mentioned Sainsbury about 33 times now. I don't know whether you're are you in shares of them or something. I don't know. <laughs> I get the nectar points then, that's all I'll say. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Um, guys, obviously, short session today, but I mean, I, for me, Chris has hit the mark. He's obviously explained everything out there about retention and what was the point of the session today. So I'm delighted, Chris. Thank you for, for putting that on for us. Guys, out there in, uh, in viewer land, are there any further questions for myself and Chris before we call the session to a halt? Um, like I say, you will be able to read and sorry, look at this, the uh, the slides and listen in again um, later today. I'll get Ruth on the case when I send her over the recording. Chris, if you can just whiz us the presentation over, that would be course. superb. Thank you, mate. Yeah, uh, yeah please do connect with me on LinkedIn as well if you see any value there. Yeah, thanks, mate. Um, any more for any more, as they say in uh, wherever they say that. No, I think we're going to call it a day, Chris. Thanks, thanks. I didn't realise you were under the cosh, mate. That's very good of you. Very good of you to get through uh, the session feeling uh, not a million percent. So, suck, man. Thanks. Right, Desperate man. to start. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for everybody out there listening in. Obviously, a nice short session today. So, have a great rest of your day. I hope uh, your work day goes well. And we'll uh, see you again very, very soon. All the best, guys. Thanks a lot. See you later. Thanks, Take care.